Hi. OK, so here we are again. Um, in this video, I want to just talk about and look at the scenario where you have an array of images. You know, we've been looking at these little experiments where, hey, I load a, in some animal and I display it on the screen, or I load a flower and I display it on the screen. What if I want to have 100 different flower images? Or what if I want to have 100 different animal images? Um, certainly having 100 different image variables isn't going to be that sustainable. An array, of course, is the perfect scenario here. And just as we have, a, you know, in the same way that we have uh, an integer called x, we could have an array of integers, you know, called nums. We can have the same exact thing with a p image. So I can make a p image array. Here we have 10 p image objects just in this array by just declaring the variable name, the type, using the square brackets, and then specifying the size of the array. And we could use an array list and other things that we may or may not have seen in videos. This one. OK, so why would we want to do this? So there's, a, there's several scenarios. Um, one scenario is that we simply want to, by the way, I made myself a little smaller here. I don't know if this is better. But um, one is that we might just want to do a slideshow. So if we have a whole lot of images and we either want to show them in sequence um, uh, uh, automatically or we, every time the user clicks the mouse, we go to the next image, that might be something we want to do. And this, this example is in learning processing. and. Uh, there will be a link to it below somewhere. <laughs> uh, another thing we might actually want to do is draw an animation. Now, looking at this, you might think, OK, the point of doing animation and processing is that we have an algorithm, and I'm using variables and a sine wave and doing this thing and all this kind of stuff to make shapes change color and grow and shrink and move and all that sort of stuff on the screen. But you know, something that might happen to us, for example, if we look here, these are just a whole lot of stick figure PNGs. And each one of these is a frame of an animation sequence. Maybe you have, uh, you've done this in another environment. And what you want to do is display that animation sequence back in processing. So a way that you could do that is load an array of images and show them one at a time. Now, this is kind of a sophisticated example, which I will link to this one below, um, and which involves a lot like there's image sequence, there's a whole bunch of them on the screen. They're also, they're, the actual sequence, it's moving its x, y position. Some of them are moving faster than others. So there's a lot of steps to creating this particular sequence. I, I do have some simpler ones, which I will also point to. But the, the scenario that I want to look at right now, um, together, just to get, get kind of used to the basics of using an array, is this one. So sorry, let me kind of get back to our bubbles. And right, remember we have these nice bubbles on the screen, and what are they doing? They're floating to the top. Uh, this is what we had before, only now, instead of two bubble objects, we now have an array of five bubble objects. And I loaded an image of a flower, so certainly I could do what we just did a moment ago and change from the ellipse to the flower, and now I have these five flowers moving up. But if, if I look at the data folder here, what I'll actually see is I have three flower images. And what if I want to uh, randomly each object should display a different flower image? How would I do that? So let's come back over here again. We know we have this image array. So what we could do is say, all right, there's 10 images. I can refer to any individual image by its index. So one thing that I might do in setup first is simply load each individual image into a slot in that array. So right, I have image 0, it should be flower 1. I have image 1, it should be flower 2. I have image 2, it should be flower 3. Certainly, I think there's a flaw in the way I numbered those images. And in fact, even though that might be your instinct to say, oh, I have a bunch of images, let me, let me, let me, uh, let me, um, name them one, two, and three. I think it would make a lot more sense, and I'm just going to uh, change this here to be flower zero, flower one, and flower two, just to emphasize that the way we count with an array is by um, uh, starting from zero. OK, so now I have my image, my p image flower. I'm going to make this flowers, and I'm going to have three of them. Obviously, you could do it with a lot more. Now, flowers. Zero, I want to load image zero. Flowers one, I want to load image one. And flowers two, I want to load flower two. Now, looking at this, you might say to yourself, down here where we made all the bubbles, we, we used a loop. I goes from zero to the length of the bubbles. Let's make all the bubbles. 
Here, something very similar is going on, but I loaded each image individually. You know, the, way, the reason why I did that is I have a whole bunch of file names, and I need to like manually type in those file names. But these file names also have a relationship. Flower 0, flower 1, flower 2. So actually, there isn't any reason why I couldn't just say for int i equals 0, i is less than 3, i plus plus. And really, when I said 3, I really mean the length of the array. And then I could say flowers index i. And this is kind of what I want to write, right? I want to say for every flower, flower 0, flowers 1, flowers 2, load flower 0, flower 1. But this string is actually flower i.jpg. I don't have an image called flower i. We're going to get into strings of data in some videos that are going to come later after I do these images one. But a trick that we can do with strings is I can actually say flower plus i plus jpeg. So what this is doing is it's saying start with the string flower, F-L-O-W-E-R, then take whatever the value of i is and tack it in with that, 0, 1, or 2, and then tack dot jpeg onto it. So when I run this, OK, uh, flower, I need to call this flowers. I've loaded all the flowers, but we have an error. What did I say? Here I said flower, flower. Now I have an array. So if I want to draw flowers 0, now I have those flowers. If I want to draw it with flowers 1, now I have those red flowers. And now flowers 2, now I have those yellow flowers. And you can see my aspect ratios are off. So this is something I would encourage you to figure out how to correct with this particular example. But what I want is some, vari some, some bubbles to draw flower 0, some bubbles to draw flower 1, some bubbles to draw flower 2. How are we going to do that? We need each object to store a reference to its own image. Now, in truth, you might be thinking, actually, the object doesn't have to store a reference to its own image. It just needs to store a reference to the index into the array, right? The flower, if, it, if, if I'm a bubble object, I just need to store a 0, 1, or a 2. And that will tell me which image to grab. But I think a, a more scalable, a more flexible a solution that I want to demonstrate here is what if the object itself somehow gets its own image in the constructor. So when the object is made, it stores a reference to that image. And then we don't have to dig, go to any global variable down here. We just need to display that particular image. The question is, how do we get the image here? Well, how did we get the x? How did we get the y? How did we get the diameter? We receive those as arguments to the constructor. We pass those in. Well, I made up, you know, I passed them 100 times plus i times 100, then 300, and then a random size. These are the pieces of data that I'm passing in to make each bubble. Now what I want to do is say, pass in flowers index 0, right? So I want to just pass in one more piece of data. In addition to the x, y, and the size, I want to give it an image. So if I pass that image here and I say p image temp, temp image, now I can assign that image to this particular bubble, and we're done. So the bubble, in addition to storing variables that keep track of where it is on the screen, also stores a variable about what image it's going to display. And then it receives that image in the constructor, and then uses that image to draw itself. And now if we run this, I have all the pink flowers. I'm going to change this value to 1. I have all the red flowers. I'm going to change this value to 2. And I have all the yellow flowers. Let's do one more step here, right? Now, sometimes I want to pass in a 0. Sometimes I want to pass in a 1. Sometimes I want to pass in a 2. How could I make that decision? I could use i. I could use random. Let's use random. Int index equals random between 0 and 3. And really, instead of 3, I want to 0 between 0 and the length of the array. So this is giving me a random value between 0 and the length of the array, converting it into an integer. If the length of that array is 3, I'm going to have a 0, or a 1, or a 2. Let's use that index here. And now, we can see when we run it, each of our bubbles has a different flower. We didn't get a red flower. That's so sad. Let's run this again. Now we got a red flower. Only one, but two yellow, two pink, and one red. So we can see this is the power of using an array. And you can start to imagine, hmm, 
There's more to this here. Even though we're using an array, the object itself has a reference to its own image. So let's say we're pulling images from Google Image Search, some web service, some API somewhere. We could have some other mechanism that grabs those images and passes them into objects to use for its own internal display. So this is a very powerful way of thinking through this problem of keeping, of having kind of an engine that loads the images and the objects themselves then receiving those images as inputs. Um, so, you know, there's, there's various things you could try here. You could think about what if you made each one of these an image sequence? That's kind of a difficult problem. Um, you might just simply figure, uh, like try, try the same idea with your own images. Uh, um, um, I'm trying to think of other things you could add to this, to this example, which I can't think of. I don't know, I'll write it somewhere, somewhere brilliant someday, sometime. If I can. Okay, so this is it now in the sense that this is not it at all. This is it for sort of like walking through the, the basic first ideas of using images. What we really want to get to, which is what I'm going to start doing in the next set of videos, is what if we don't just use images as things we draw to the screen, what if we invent our own images through an algorithm? If we could set the pixels of every, if we could individually set the pixel, every pixel in our processing window, you know, the, the world is our oyster, what, 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 what could we not possibly draw anything if we have access to every single pixel on the screen? So that's what I want to start looking at next. Okay, uh, goodbye. <laughs>